respectfully acknowledges that we are located in the traditional and treaty territory of the Mississauga, Mississauga, and Chippewa Nations, collectively known as the Williams Treaty's First Nations, which include Curve Lake, Hiawatha, Alderville, Scugog Island, Rama, Beausoleil, and Georgina Island First Nations. We acknowledge that the Williams Treaty's First Nations have been stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters, and that today remain vigilant over their health and integrity for generations to come. Clerk, please serve as board to open the swearing ceremony, swearing in ceremony of our new Deputy Chief of Police. As a board, we remain committed to supporting the safety and the well-being of the community by guiding the police service that is accountable, responsible, and ensuring that they do their actual work every day. It's our responsibility to ensure this executive leadership of the service is a right fit for the service and the community we serve. I am proud that the board has exercised its power under the Police Services Act to appoint a deputy chief of police. It is no small task to find someone fit for the position who is dedicated to improving the professional stance of the police and what they stand for. Not to mention someone who has the energy to keep up with Chief Paul Vandekra. <laughs> Thank you to my colleagues on the board who have remained dedicated with this task at hand. And we are happy to witness Jeff Haskins' swearing in ceremony today. Jeff arrived with significant leadership experience and has managed complex portfolios. We have already seen him in action and witnessed how his approach has complemented and supported Chief Vandegraaff's leadership style and vision for innovation in operations, partnerships, and technologies. His passion for service and genuine commitment to policing, Jeff has already been set to work with the board and Chief Vandegraaff and of this, and as of this week, will hit the ground running. Rosalind Carter, former First Lady of the United States, once said, a leader takes people where they want to go. A great leader takes people where they don't necessarily want to go, but ought to be. Today, we anticipate that our chief and our incoming deputy chief will take on many initiatives and champion many important issues as policing and our community safety continues to evolve, leading the service in tandem with the board to a place where we should all be. Thank you. Solemnly affirm that I will be loyal to Canada and to the citizens of the town of Kirkwood, and I will uphold the Constitution of Canada, and that I will, to the best of my ability, perseverance, persevere the peace, prevent offenses, and discharge my other duties as Deputy Chief of Police faithfully, impartially, and in accordance with law. This is the open secrecy. I, Jeffrey A. Haskins, do solemnly affirm that I will not disclose any information obtained by me in the course of my duties as Deputy Chief of Police, except as I may be authorized or required by law. First of all, welcome to members of the Covert Police Services Board, the Covert Police Services member, members of Covert Council, senior staff. We have many great citizens of Covert also welcome before us, and more importantly to you, Deputy Chief, to you and your family. Uh, pleasure meeting you today. Thank you again, Acting Inspector Bambridge, for your role as Acting of Ceremony. As Mayor, it is my honour to be here this afternoon to welcome you, Deputy Chief Haskins, and congratulations on behalf of the Town of Colbert Council, senior staff, and the citizens of Colbert. I say assuredly that today is a great day for Colbert and its citizens. Coburg is a town that is bursting with growth. 
as we face the positive realities of this growth and the challenges that come with it, the responsibilities placed on operations in our town departments are demanding as well. And that is also true for Colbert Police Service. I say this not only as mayor, but as a proud member of the Colbert Police Services Board, you are joining, in my opinion, one of the finest police departments in the province. Deputy Chief Haskins brings 30 years of policing experience to the Colbert Police Service's day-to-day -day operations, experience in a multitude of portfolios, and is a proven leader in the policing community. Chief Vandergraaf gladly welcomed him to his executive command team and has stated very clearly that it is better the Deputy Chief Haskins as he brings his unique skill set and progressive approach. Deputy Chief Haskin, your success is our success. Today, we thank you for the important work that you will do building trust and working to ensure our residents feel safe within our community. We also extend a, gra a debt of gratitude to your family who are here today because we know of the sacrifice that they make as they support you in doing your job every single day. We wish you all the best as you begin your career with the Colbert Police Services. And again, as mayor, I'm proud to welcome you to the town of Colbert. Congratulations. I've had an opportunity to meet with Deputy Haskins on a couple of occasions now, and got to know a little bit about him and his previous uh, policing experience, extensive policing experience at the Durham Regional Police. Um, which is not totally unfamiliar to me. We have uh, trained with DRPS for uh, about 20 years now uh, for use of force training and had many interactions with them. And, uh, myself personally have found uh, them to be a, a great organization with great leaders. And um, I'm also, uh, after meeting with you, Deputy, uh, I'm very impressed by your understanding of the importance of having a great relationship with the police association and management and um, your commitment verbally to me to work together for the greater good of all our members and for the citizens of Colbert at large. Um, I've got every confidence that the board has picked a person with great knowledge and experience and our service will uh, certainly benefit uh, from your combined experiences um, with DRP. Uh, welcome, and I'm looking forward to having many more conversations with you in the days and weeks to come. <laughs> Thank you. All of Colbert Council, Colbert Police Service members, and our honored guests, thank you for your attendance today. A special thank you to our Colbert Police Service own pipes and drums, Piper Ian McFarland. And also thank you to the representatives of our honor guard who volunteered to be here today. Before I continue, I wanted to take a moment to recognize Acting Inspector Scott Bambridge for being our MC today. Thank you, Scott, not only for today, but for your continued leadership in our police service. Now, I would like to welcome Mr. and Mrs. Haskins, Sarah, Mike, or Michael, and Jordan, and the rest of the family. We are so glad that you chose to be here today. Last but not least, Deputy Chief Haskins. Jeff, welcome aboard. As the 13th person to hold the office of Chief of Police for the Covert Police Service, I am honored to welcome another strong team member to our already amazing team. This is truly a special day, one that is not about one person alone. Although we are celebrating Jeff's accomplishments, and rightly so, we are gathered here to witness tradition and remember the foundation for the principles that make the Covert Police Service truly exceptional. The original board was instituted in 1834 and was later incorporated as the town of Covert in 1837. Our crest is encircled 
with the motto Lex Presidium Libertatis. For those of you like me whose Latin is not quite current, that means the law of the defense of liberty. The men and women of the Covert Police Service, past and present, have continuously strived to live up to that model since our very first Chief of Police, Edwin Cooney. Today, this model remains relevant. Community safety and well-being is very different today than in 1837. The variety of crime and societal issues that our members face challenge our motto daily. The members of our service, sworn, civilian, and volunteers, deliver on that promise each and every time they act in defense of liberty. They are a team of professionals that all push or pull at times to achieve excellence. Our community partners at times lead us, at other times assist us in achieving amazing and innovative outcomes. Many of those partners are here today. Thank you. Today we stand at a pivotal time of change in policing across our country, of which covert must lead. The public asks much more from us, much of what is not traditional or core policing functions. But more importantly, the public are asking for different. This change is not easy, but then change for the better is never. This transformation will be met, but with divisiveness by some. As police professionals, we must meet that challenge and find or create common ground to grow. When we exercise our leadership in that fashion, an opening will occur that will allow great things to happen. The cynics will write this off as another police transformation or the newest buzzword. That must be challenged at its core. There will not be a single driver of this change. Not from my office, not from the community, Rather, it has to be a collaborative, innovative commitment to create and embed this required change. Consensus takes time and work, but that is what the Covert Police Service is committed to doing. In many speeches, Sir Robert Peel is quoted, and often we hear, police are the public and the public are the police. Times have changed so much in the past few years that in many ways, this has become a hollow statement one that I feel falls short. My challenge to you, Jeff, and to all members of the Covert Police Service is more this more applicable tenant appeal. The key to preventing crime is public support. Every community member must share the responsibility of preventing crime, as if they were volunteer members of the force. They will only accept this responsibility if the community supports and importantly trusts the police. That's our challenge. As a team, you and I will collaborate with our community to meet this goal. You've demonstrated your skills, knowledge, and experience, and you will serve us well in achieving all of what I've just said. We're not gonna do this alone. We have a team of sworn and civilian members, volunteers, and a willing community that just wanna help us to this greatness. You now join a team that has become accustomed to my relentless drive for improvement, my insatiable need to be ahead of the curve, and starting every question with, are we sure? <laughs> to be honest, they'll probably have a different way of describing me to you, Jeff, but I'll leave that for you to figure out. <laughs> Jeff, I encourage you to dig deeper than you've ever before, to challenge yourself more than you think possible, and to achieve shared greatness that will release unlimited possibilities. In closing, I will leave everyone with this challenge from Aristotle. Moral excellence comes about as a result of habit. We become just by doing just acts. We become temperate by doing temperate acts. And we become brave by doing brave acts. Thank you and welcome aboard. Hold your visa, I forget to put my glasses on. <laughs> We're on to the badge presentation. Um, this is a great honor of a chief um, or a board chair in my investiture to, uh, to, to, to hand a badge to a new police officer. Uh, in this case, to hand a badge to, uh, to our new deputy chief. And uh, Jeff and I had a conversation about the, the importance of this and, and 
Jeff asked, uh, asked for a favor. So I am pleased to have one of Jeff's mentors joining us today. Retired Chief of Police Mike Buells commenced his policing career in 1982, and his career with Durham Regional Police spanned 31 years, serving as Chief of Police from 2007 to 2014. Chief Buells is now retired, but his legacy includes the opening of a number of new buildings, including a new training and 911 center in Whitby, and a new police station and forensics lab in Clarington. The final two buildings that were envisioned to be part of the Clarington campus will start construction later this year, and so his leadership continues to positively impact the residents of Durham Region. Chief Ewells was always repeatedly lauded for his leadership and effectiveness in investigating and clearing major crimes. Chief Ewells and Deputy Chief Haskins developed a strong connection when they both were assigned to the Criminal Intelligence Branch in 2002. Chief Ewells was the inspector of the Intelligence Branch and served as a mentor and coach to Jeff and made him feel that he could accomplish anything he set his mind to. It is an honor to invite retired Chief Buells to the front of the stage today to present Deputy Chief Haskins his badge. I'm loud enough. First, I'll uh, call Deputy Chief Haskins forward to receive his challenge coins. We're blessed in that Constable J.B. Bagley organized and arranged and designed our challenge coins. And every member of our service has the, uh, what I call the great privilege to have their challenge coins. Jeff? Oh no, are you going to stay here for the boys? Mike and Jordan. As members of our family, I'm going to probably spend a fair amount of time with your dad, and he's going to curse me a fair amount. So every time, he, well, everybody else does, so they he will too. Um, so I want you to know that uh, if you look at this challenge point all the time, this is a representation of my thank you, Jeff, for your sacrifices for us. Thank you. I'll over here. Sarah? Last but definitely not least, on behalf of the Covert Police Service, thank you for your support, thank you for your commitment, and thank you for the extra home duty uh, <laughs> that you're going to have to pull. I'm sure that we don't become police leaders without, without the strong folks at home, and uh, on behalf of everybody here at the Covert Police Service, thank you very, very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. certainly look forward to meeting residents, business owners, municipal and other public officials that I know are here today. And to echo some of the, the words that uh, Chief Vandergraaff said, working in partnership with all agencies that contribute to the overall community safety and well-being of this amazing town. I want you to know that I will honor this office I will help steward this organization and demonstrate that I have an unwavering commitment to serve you. I've been doing this work on behalf of the community for almost my entire adult life. For those of you who know me, know that I love what I do and that I bring that passion and that intensity to work every day. I have proudly served the residents of Durham for over 30 years, and I intend to bring that enthusiasm to my new role. You know, I'm extremely thankful to the DRPS 
for the opportunity to serve and the professional experiences that I feel have prepared me for this opportunity. I've learned much over the last 30 years serving in many roles with varied experiences, but I know that I still have a lot to learn, especially about coworking. This is uh, a very proud moment for me, and I want to thank those of you who are here uh, to witness my oath of office and my swearing in. I am truly blessed to be supported by family today, and I also have a number of friends and colleagues here, and I want uh, you to know how much I appreciate you. I will rely on you to influence me guide me, to inspire me on this next journey. I especially want to express gratitude to Chief Mike Eudels. Your mentorship, your guidance, your encouragement, and more often than not, telling me to pull my head out of, well, <laughs> I, I think you get where I'm going here. Chief Eudels, you profoundly influenced me during the early stages of my career and as Chief Van de Graaff has already indicated, it made me feel that I had the potential to do and be anything. There are a great many challenges facing the policing profession, but at the core, we are in the business of helping people, and we are truly on the front lines, serving as gatekeepers to our system of democracy. Canadian policing is revered around the world, and as our modern society evolves, our profession is expected to adapt and be responsive to the new social expectations. Coburg Police Service is a shining example of a very agile institution that has progress infused into its culture and into its DNA. CPS is already a pioneer in so many ways, but we will continue to prepare for the future we know is coming. And by doing so, we will establish strong relationships with residents and members alike to foster an environment where we can co-create public safety. We will use our privilege to help those who need our support, our advocacy, and to be our ally, or to, or to be an ally. Most importantly, we will ensure that our power and authority is only used for the greater good. In short, let's continue to set the gold standard, the standard by which others will benchmark. As I've indicated, CPS has a reputation of being an extremely innovative organization, and this has been exemplified under the courageous and wholehearted leadership of Chief Paul Vandegraaff. Chief Vandegraaff has established an aspirational vision and an agenda, and I look forward to transforming this vision operationally. Chief, you and I haven't known each other for very long, but already, you are an inspiration. You're a whirling dervish, but you are an inspiration. <laughs> you model behavior and true leadership, and I'm looking forward to supporting the vision that you have established for CPS. To the members, I intend to work tirelessly in support of the compassionate service you provide each every day, often under the most challenging circumstances. You are the unsung heroes, and I want you to know that we are going to continue to do great things and protect this great community. Although today I'm sworn in as Deputy Chief of Police, the real focus should be on the various, various crisis situations that impact and affect our residents. Our members respond to the most tragic of circumstances, engage with people, 
on the worst day of their lives. And they're expected to calmly restore order to chaos. Our members are the people that make difficult choices to resolve situations that with a split second, they have to make a decision to say it that may be a life-saving decision. To them, I say, I have your back. The members of CPS have made a commitment to provide you, the residents, with excellent service. And in my short time and exposure to the people here, I have witnessed this pride and this spirit. CPS members endeavor to provide a wraparound service to residents and those who visit this great town. It's a privilege to serve, so we will be adapted to the changes in social expectation. We will evaluate and evolve. We will listen and learn. My mom is over here, so I'm gonna temper this comment because she might tell you that I've not always been the best listener. <laughs> but I can emphatic emphatically say that uh, I'm certainly listening now. Policing is socially constructed by the people, for the people. So I'm pleased to say to the residents of Coburg, you get to decide. It's my hope that I will inspire our members to act boldly, to act sensitively, to compa act compassionately in all situations. I expect that I, along with our great team, will continue to ask these three questions. Number one, how can we help? Number two, are we responsive to the needs of the community? And I'll end up, and I'll finalize my statement here today by saying number three, are we ready for, for the future we know is coming? Thank you folks for being here today. I certainly appreciate all the support along this journey and uh, for those of you who have helped me start this next chapter in my life, those are my, my remarks. And, and uh, again, thank you to all the dignitaries and the residents that are here today and uh, colleagues from other police organizations as well. Thank you. Chief, um, sworn in, how do you feel, sir? Excited, yeah, I'm starting to relax now. This was the part that, I, that is the most uncomfortable for me, is that um, a swearing in process, but now I'm really uh, ready to get to work. What do you see in this service? Um, not as a challenge, but where's your drive with this service, I guess? What do you see yourself doing going forward with this service? You know, so this police service, as I've indicated, has so many great things going for it. And um, I'm hoping to bring that, uh, continue that energy and uh, of being able um, to bring that innovative lens, that ability to see around corners, the ability to plan for the future, the ability to make sure that we uh, honor the, the commitments that we've made to the community. Um, this is a great town. It's easy to fall in love with this place. It is the feel-good town of Ontario and Canada. And you want to preserve that. 
And the way to do that is to work with everybody else so that we all take that responsibility seriously. And so I'm, I'm happy uh, here. I have not as much energy as Chief Vandegraaff, but I'm hoping to be a very close second behind there to, to do that. So, Last question. I asked uh, former Deputy UL Chief, but when he was hired on as Deputy Chief, I asked him because just concerning citizens that do you see yourself going elsewhere. In other words, sometimes the people of Covert or other communities want sort of, I wouldn't say long-term commitment, but they want to know, is this a stepping stone for you or is this, you know, roots planted? You know what? I um, am loyal and committed to this community. Uh, that's the reason why I applied for this job. This community spoke to me. There are many other opportunities that are out there, but I chose this one. Um, I chose to stay uh, to come to this community. You know, I had uh, what I would have described as an aspiring career with Durham Regional Police, but I chose to come th in this direction because of all of the things that Cobert is, all of the things that Cobert Police Service is as an institution. So, you know, I'm, I'm committed to, to the folks here and the residents and, you know, when I, in order to build relationships, you have to put the time in, you have to make that commitment. And that's my uh, objective.